Good afternoon, Prime I'm here from the Open People's Commissioner's Office to talk to you about what we're experiencing and seeing really emerge as a picture across Wales as all the local authorities um, work towards becoming more age friendly under the Welsh Government's age friendly Wales strategy. So, firstly, I'll just very quickly talk about what is an age friendly community. It's a place where people can get out and about, do the things that mean things to them. It's uh, about leading a healthy and an active life, being able to access information, know what's happening, and finally, participation and involvement, having a voice and ensuring that the, the people who are making decisions, the organizations making decisions that change and develop our communities are responsive and listening to the voice of all the people. The, the model itself, the, the WHO, oops, sorry. Sorry, it's just to get you in the camera. Oh, right, uh, yeah, height made a difference. <laughs> um, so, so the World Health Organization's model is based around the idea that you can basically look at aging as a process, it's something that we are all doing, and to optimize that aging process, we need eight areas of our lives to work collectively together in a way which enables us to age well. I've listed them there, outdoor spaces and buildings, transport, housing. Rather than just go through them in order, though, I think that what's really important is that there's an element of age-friendly, which is about the quality improvement in each of these things. But there's also a very important element of age-friendly, which is about these things working collectively together. To give you an example, it's very easy for decisions taken around, say, housing or planning and the construction of maybe of a new housing scheme or an estate without necessarily reference to how outdoor spaces or how that, that how people will socially participate, how people will come together. Where is, the, where is the local GP surgery? Where is the local shops? Where is the local school? How will people, how, how does that sense of community emerge? in a way which enables people to age well and to connect to one another and develop the relationships that mean things to people. That has to take place. So in, in other words, what the decisions that are taken have to basically include stakeholders from all of those eight areas, as well as facilitate the, the quality of improvement in them. And the, 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 as well as the eight domains, sorry, it's cut off by the Zoom. <laughs> But this is a fairly standard, if you like, plan, do, and review cycle. So as a process, age friendly, it begins with engagement and understanding. And it's the engagement and understanding with the community and the community organizations and the range of stakeholders in play. Um, and then collectively undertake the planning process, collectively act and implement and collectively review. That's really important because the principles that underpin that process this uh, are about all the people have to be part of that process. The, their voice must be heard because it's their experience that will dictate and, and how the improvements are, are uh, how required improvements will take place, um, how, how we can be sure that they will work. Um, there's a focus on equity, intersectoral collaboration and multi-level governance particularly I think is important and that goes back to the, 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 this idea that if we need there is no one organization in in control of those eight areas there is no one community that has the complete um, the complete you know the the, uh, the the strings of all of those things and so it's necessary for everybody to work together and so that principle of equity, and shared endeavor, I think, and, um, and, and, and it is absolutely crucial to the process. And that, that, that has important implications in terms of power and choice. And, and that's why the kind of principles of co-production, co-creation are really critical. Um, and, and of course, as I mentioned earlier, that this kind of idea of a life course approach, recognition that age-friendly communities are not about creation of services for all the people. It's about optimizing an aging process that everybody is going through. And, and, and certainly the experience of the World Health Organization has been that when you design, when you involve all the people in the design of communities, spaces, services, they work for everybody. 
Um, so very quickly, that, that's a very rapid holistic view of, of what the, the WHO age-friendly model is. Uh, as I mentioned right at the start, we, um, with the commitment, you know, the, the age-friendly idea in Wales has been around actually for quite a long time now. I think you know you can go back to really the first the Welsh government's first strategy for older people, which I think was two thousand and well, I suppose it goes back all the way back to two thousand and three, really, uh, and then developments all the way through. Um, there was an aging well and Wales program that ran from twenty fourteen to twenty nineteen, um, and the Older People's Commissioner made um, age friendly Wales a strategic priority for us um, uh, in 2019, 2018, 2019. And just in 2021, Welsh Government, as I said, released a strategy uh, for an ageing society, Age Friendly Wales, which really injected funding into the 22 local authorities to begin this process of engagement to really work towards doing that age friendly um, stuff in practice. Um, and the World Health Organization as well have a global network of age friendly communities. And it's our aspiration that all local authorities are able to lead the creation of age friendly communities and their patches that join that global network as well. There's a real sense of direction, a real sense of movement, a real sense of collective endeavor around this, as I said. Um, and so what we see, uh, just very quickly, and I, when I put this presentation together, it's a moving feast because so much actually is happening. Um, I, I, I wanted to begin by mentioning the, given that we're in Swansea and the work here in Swansea, and I know many of you in the room here today, will be experiencing exactly what's in recent, the team at the back. Um, the walks that have been happening in Swansea and the, and the involvement of multiple different groups from the community, all the people, the inclusion of the forum, um, and really the involvement of even local businesses, council teams, the internal work that goes on around that. People walking collectively together, sharing their experiences, sharing their experiences, not just of positive things, but of challenges that they're facing in their daily lives, lead to the creation of ideas. And those ideas are then able to be worked on. Um, you know, the, I, I know that those, those walks have led to the, the recent work with the choir. Um, uh, and I believe that those ideas around electric bikes and the, you know, the, all of these ideas which are coming from people for in, in, you know, activities or, or projects that will make a difference for people's lives. But the ownership of that is by everybody involved on the walk. I think it's 100 people now a week on the walk. It's a fantastic work. But it represents that collective, as I say, people, the businesses, the council, everybody's sort of involved working collectively on this. So for me, that, that, that from an engagement perspective and an involvement, those relationships and the development of that are happening in real time. And projects are beginning to get planned and delivered in real time because of the, 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 the network which has been able to get built. So it's a fantastic example. Of course, Swansea at the minute, you know, we, we, we're seeing that activity in an urban context with Swansea as a city. Um, it, it, within Gwynedd and Powers, we've seen very different approaches, which are obviously you've got much, uh, a much larger geography to deal with, a much more dispersed community, um, a, a much more rural context. And so in, in Greenwich, the approach towards engagement has largely been around the fund, seed funding of community level activity. So that, you know, it's listening to, listening to people in communities and what people want to do and providing funding for small scale activities. It might be a lunch club, it might be a dance, it might be a walk, it might be whatever, whatever is necessary to allow people in that community to come together and do something. Because by doing that, what that enables to happen is that that community group itself then becomes an identifiable, you know, it might be in that place or it might be in that place. And then the council are able to facilitate the bringing together of those individual rural groups, either digitally or, or in practice, or, you know, in, in, in person. Um, and, and then they are able to then work at, through that planning process and, and design delivery. And finally, you know, in, in Powers, we're, we're seeing what we, really um, an approach towards the development of a representational framework for, for, for all the people's voice. Um, again, very rurally dispersed, but rather than taking an approach towards funding activities, which enable that stuff to come, come through, they're actually putting in place um, a, a local structure 
of, of new forum in, in investment, new forum reinvigoration, so that, that people have have um, groups they can go to and have a say, and then the involvement of those groups in, in decision making um, at forums at, 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 the, at the wider county level. So those are just three quick examples. I know with the, the Cardiff team, you guys have just launched your age friendly forum and the recruitment process for that at the moment. Um, you know, up in Anglesey in, in this one, there there have an older persons council group which works currently with the local voluntary sector and works with the councils. There's lots of examples of work happening around Wales at the moment. Very exciting stuff, but it, it, it's it's a real opportunity for us to learn and to feed back to that World Health Organization what the challenges are and what the responses are in urban contexts and rural contexts. And I think what's really fabulous about the approach here in Wales is that it is being driven by that, that community approach and the recognition that councils, businesses, voluntary sector organizations, um, and all the people and the, their communities and the groups that work together, that identify as a community and are able to work collectively. 